now it's time to start getting into this portion of the project. There apparently was a piece of fiberboard that would have gone here that would cover would have covered this up, shielding it electrically from the inside of the of the synth module. But whoever detached the <laughs> two sections from each other created something else under here that we're going to have to have to get rid of and see if we can fabricate a new one because I doubt I'll be able to find a piece of fiberboard. I might even be able to use some of this right here. So I'm going to get into this thing and see what we can find. Okay, I've removed all the screws of this piece of fiberboard here and let's take a look. All right. What have we here? I got a couple of... That just fell right in right before I opened it. A piece of... Uh, trim hardware there. Definitely keep those two on each side. We'll need those later as well as all the screws. So this is the power supply module down here and transformer fuses. Um, one of these is the audio out. Oh, there's That's the uh, that's the volume. I believe this is the audio out right here. And this is all the signals coming in from the keyboard to the, to the module, to the, to the synth portion. And everything that makes a sound is all up right in here. Uh, looks looks okay. I've uh, got some insulation foam here that's disgusting and going to have to be tossed out. Here's a manufacturer tag. August 2, 1976. Serial number 1903. So now we know how old it is. About what I expected. And uh, like you've seen, it actually works pretty well. We've got some tuning issues on the Taurus voice and a few other things we need to fix up, so let's get into it. All right, I flipped this thing over so we can see it better. Here's the power module we were looking at earlier. There's a second section that's attached to the uh, fiber board that was here that we're going to uh, have to deal with. It's got some electrolytic capacitors, kind of like these, and we're going to be replacing pretty much all the electrolytic capacitors in this because after a couple decades, the electrolyte evaporates and they don't work nearly as well. So we're going to uh, replace those with new. Also, these potentiometers here, which are responsible for some of the tuning, we're going to replace those with CERMET, C-E-R-M-E-T, ceramic metallic. Uh, potentiometers. Moog put out an update in the 70s uh, suggesting doing that because the CERMET potentiometers are much more resistant to heat and hold their tune a lot better. So we're going to do that and we're going to start by removing these bolts through here and flipping this thing over to uh, take a look at the other, other side and especially the sliders which are under here for the variable control. Those things are really scratchy. So let's do that. All right, after a whole bunch of working with this thing, we finally got it out. It turns out it wasn't mounted in there right. And it was, there was a lot of pressure. It was supposed to be in this little slot back here, but it wasn't. There was a lot of pressure on these bolts. And I flipped it up, and look what we found. Some magnets which hold the door closed to the variable <laughs> cover, which we still have, actually. How about that? So we got under here a whole lot of dust and a whole lot of junk inside these sliders and that's what we're going to be cleaning up. Okay, I swept it off with a soft brish, bristle brush to get some of the dust off of here and now we're going to get into here and clean up some of those uh, sliders. The, to get these knobs off, you're going to use a 1 16th inch hex wrench like this and there's a little, little uh, Nut right in the side of there, you pull it back, and the knob should just lift right off like that. And you do the same for the other one. In this case, it's lost its little, um, its little label on top. All right, now for these little plastic covers here, you're just gonna have to kind of carefully work with them to pull them off. And it takes oh, there we go, that one came off okay. You want to Pull them off carefully and set them aside and make sure that you don't lose any of them because all the, these are <laughs> not that big a deal. They're almost impossible to replace. So after that, we're going to unscrew these four screws and see what's under there. All right, got the screws off. Let's take a look. Okay. Well, 
pretty dirty. A lot of gunk feels kind of kind of greasy there. I may try a little contact cleaner, but if that doesn't work to get these things sliding right and not being scratchy, then we're gonna have to desolder them from the board and clean them from the inside out. Um, I'm gonna give this a shot and let you know what happens. At this point, I did go ahead and use the contact cleaner to try to clean out the sliders without desoldering them from the board, but it really did not work very well. The sliders got gummed up and the contact cleaner got all over the circuit board, which was okay because when I cleaned it off, the circuit board was very clean afterward, but it was a real pain, so I want to say go ahead and skip the contact cleaner desolder the sliders from the circuit board and clean them out properly like I'm about to show you how to do. Now the sliders are held onto the board at three solder points, two on the top and one on the bottom. Now you can go ahead and desolder them conventionally but I found it's pretty easy to keep some tension on the back side with your fingers, work on one solder point And after you get that one open, you just go to the other two, keeping finger tension on the back the whole time. And get one undone. And the other. And then the whole thing comes off, like so. This is a little step-by-step -step rundown of what I'm doing to clean these things out. There are four little tabs here. And all you gotta do is bend them back a little bit to open it up. Don't have to bend them back very far. And then this just comes right off. A little more. It comes right off like that. And take this, see all the gunk in there? I'm gonna clean that out. Start off by just wiping it out with a Q tip. Get all the major stuff out of there. And then this little slider here, this comes right apart, and I wipe that out. You're gonna take these two plastic bits and drop them in a little soapy water bath for a few minutes while I clean this stuff up. Now this thing's first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray it with some contact cleaner and air dry it real quick. All right, now that we got it cleaned off the first stage, just take the Q-tip, kinda rub it around, mainly get all the visible gunk off of this black slider portion and the metal contact. If you can, get it off everything else too. It may take a little bit of doing. There are 11 of these things, so this is a bit time consuming, but I promise it's worth it. Got this thing all cleaned off now. I got these parts out of the soapy water bath and kind of dried them off a bit. You still gotta get in here, sorry, you still gotta get in here and get out all the, all the gunk from inside there. Chances are good after a few decades there's a bit built up. And then you gotta do the same thing for this. Just get it nice and clean so that it'll slide really nicely once you put it back together. And now I just put it back together. I'm gonna take this little glider, slider, glider, put it right there. I'm gonna take some of this special slider grease. I'm gonna apply it along the top and bottom there. And then I'm gonna put this on right along here. Just a little dab will do you. Not a, not a whole lot needed here. Tiny bit right in there as well, where the plastic meets the metal here. And take this, drop it in there, slide it around a bit. And then we put a little bit of the slider grease right on the contacts, just a little bit, enough to kind of coat it, but not too thick. I use deoxid fader grease and this stuff works really really well for this kind of electronic application and just take this flip it over like that 
press it back down, and bend the tabs back. Oh, that one just broke off, oh boy. Well, be careful as you do this. I think with three left, it'll still be okay. For the loudness and filter sliders, there's a shortcut you can do if you're really careful. These are held on to the board by three solder points, two down here and one up here. If you can just undo this one and then very carefully pull the whole thing back like that without stressing those other two solder points too much, then after you bend these tabs back, which I've already done, you can lift the back off and clean it right on the board like that. This just pops right out. And you just clean it kind of like you did the other uh, filter uh, envelope sliders. But in this way, it's just a lot easier than having to take it completely off and, and undo it. And getting it back on the board with just one solder is a piece of cake. All right, I've got the thing reassembled kind of halfway for testing, got it on the variable setting. And as you will hear, sliders are working great. Awesome. I'm really happy about this. This is working out well. All right, so the next uh, video I'm going to do, I'm going to get in there and replace the capacitors and potentiometers and do some final cleanup and such. Then we're going to put the caps back on the keyboard and reassemble the whole thing into one solid unit like it originally was. So be on the lookout for that video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.